all who are oppressed. Amen. Praise his holy name. Okay, so our topic for this spiritual development Sunday is spiritual distress. Spiritual distress is a disruption in a person's belief or value system. It may occur when a person is unable to find sources of meaning, hope, love, comfort, strength, and connection in life or when conflict occurs between their beliefs and what's happening in their life. And I have to say that in this season that we're in right now, many people are battling this. Many people are dealing with spiritual distress. Uh, it started out with COVID, amen? Uh, well, I'm getting ahead of, of the lesson, but I, I want you to know that this is, something that will happen uh, with major change. And so we're gonna just go over this morning some of those, uh, those things that may be happening uh, to a lot of us. M many of you know that I'm, 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 I'm in a grieving season. I lost a very, very, very close relative in May. And, uh, and, and that, that this whole COVID season, uh, calls for me a lot of spiritual distress, but that, that, that took me over the edge. And I'm not alone because I've, I've, I've served in many funerals. I've done funerals in the last uh, two years uh, that were just, just amped, you know, the numbers, the quantity was just up. And uh, I know people who are dealing with illness, uh, specifically from COVID, uh, multiple times who have lost members uh, to this season. And so it's, it's not a strange thing. It's, it would not be an abnormality for you to be experiencing spiritual distress in such a stressful time that we are all believers and unbelievers alike, Americans and, and people worldwide. We are all, we can all share in this particular uh, stress or distress. Uh, amen. So first of all, let's look at the signs. Feeling separated from God, spiritual distress, feeling a disconnect, uh, losing touch with your faith. I had a, a long conversation with someone recently from my past that I hadn't spoken to in quite some time. And I mean, like 40 years. And she didn't say anything that I hadn't heard multiple times over these last almost three years with this, this COVID in that, you know, why, you know, questioning God or, or just, just falling away uh, from the faith or uh, from even having faith. Amen. Um, another sign is struggling to find time for the things of God. And this specifically is what, what we, we spoke about, she and I. Uh, you, you've fallen away from church involvement. You, 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 you're not attending or even online. Um, you're not serving. You, you, you're not participating in church activities. You're no longer uh, having either community or personal Bible study. You no longer pray. Uh, or all of that has declined or diminished uh, greatly. Another sign is, is you're more focused on past mistakes or past things uh, than, than you are on ways to turn it around, to make it better. Uh, another sign is a general sense of unhappiness or melancholy. Um, I, I, that was a huge part of my grief, of course. Um, and then you, you, another sign is you might question the meaning of life. Why am I here? Really? You know, you, you might question the meaning of suffering. You know, you ask, you know, why has this thing, whatever that thing is happened to me? Why now? Why me? You, 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 you may have difficulty sleeping. Um, you may question your belief system. You'll have feelings of emptiness. You, you may have lost your direction. You might feel abandoned. Um, another sign is feelings of being left 
or forgotten by God. Again, this is not, I, I just want to make this clear. We are in such a draining season uh, with this with this COVID. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm, I want to specifically mask uh, or, or bring everything under that COVID because this is something that changed everybody's life in the entire world. Um, so at some point, we all had some spiritual distress that was brought on by this great major change that happened to us. Uh, major change is a common cause for spiritual distress. Surrendering to changes and accepting new realities can be a painful process. I mean, think about it. Um, we, were we were on quarantine. We, 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 we could not go anywhere or do anything. Everything was shut down. You couldn't go out to eat. The restaurants were closed. Um, that was a huge change. A lot of people's identity is tied up in what they do. So if they're not able to go to work, who are they? You know what I mean? Uh, busyness was a way of life for a lot of people. They, they have their daily routines. They do this at this time and that at that time, and they lean on it. They depend on it. And all of a sudden, that was taken away. These are, these are things that can cause spiritual uh, distress. Uh, so specific to COVID, like I, I just said, the restriction, the restriction would, was a big part of it. Um, not being able to do the things that you couldn't go to a concert, couldn't go to a football game. Kids couldn't play football. Kids didn't go to school. Can you imagine the spiritual distress that kids might have had? They, they were isolated in their homes. This was disruptive uh, for a lot of people. Then there was the illness. Um, I didn't look up the specifics. I mean, the st statistics for this specific session, but I can recall prior, uh, for prior discussions or even a sermon, I believe, where it said that more people died from COVID or COVID-related illnesses than uh, all of the major wars combined in America. That's a lot. And it's not a pretty disease to have. If you, you know, you're on, there are people that were hospitalized for weeks on end and um, hooked up to the ventilators in pain and, and just, it's just a miserable, a miserable virus to have. Uh, and so, yeah, you, you, you become spiritually distressed. Uh, and then you have, for example, uh, there was a time when if you had to go to the hospital for reasons other than COVID even, um, giving birth, you, you couldn't have your family in there. People who were dying couldn't have their families come and say goodbye in person, had to do it all on, on FaceTime. These are major changes. Um, and then there was the, 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 the things just declined. Uh, um, your, your activities, and, and I think I already went over there. And then there's the grief. Um, a lot of people died. There, there are some people who lost multiple family members. And so it can, this is something that can very well lead to depression, uh, but it's, it, it begins as spiritual distress. You feel disconnected to purpose you know, I think I have it somewhere in here, like you're just aimlessly drifting through life. Um, and then other causes can be unresolved guilt. Uh, but here's one that could really be in both categories, unmet spiritual needs. Suddenly, there's no church to go to. There was no church to go to, although legally, I think churches were not mandated to be closed during the quarantine. Uh, because of religious, you know, the right to assemble for religious purposes. But in the AME church, we were shut down. And so there was no, no, uh, you know, no church. 
you have, even in church, you have this routine, you have Sunday worship, then you have Bible study when prayer, when you get together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. At our church, we, we would feed the homeless every week. Um, uh, well, in the beginning, chef would go to the facility and actually cook the food at their site. But uh, during the beginning of COVID, we at least uh, were feeding the, the homeless sandwiches and stuff. So we had this routine, um, but everything had to stop. Everything had to stop. And, and what I'm finding is as a pastor, I have more people pull on me after church then we'll take the time to call and make an appointment to come in and see me. And so there's that opportunity missed. Um, there's no, there was no gathering. There was no intimacy. Uh, and so you, you were really physically, literally isolated. Um, these, all these calls spiritual distress the, the effects of spiritual distress uh it occurs when a person is unable to find sources of meaning hope love peace comfort strength or connection in life and these all these things uh re often result in in fear there was a lot of fear a lot of fear there was anxiety uh and depression i think the 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 amount of people that develop depression through uh, this season that we're in was was astronomical. It just went up and it, it just crossed racial lines, ages, countries. Uh, because as I'm saying, this this was a major change for everybody, and we are still in it. Uh, and then there's a sense of hopelessness. Um. You tend to fall off from your routine. You stop caring, or or you just are numb. These are these are all things that develop when you disconnect uh, from purpose, specifically God's purpose. You fall away from the things of God. I think I'm ahead of it again. Uh, and so this this is overall. Um, sadness or numbness, as I said, just kind of, kind of falls on you, and 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 you're just not motivated. You're not motivated to do anything for anybody, uh, including yourself. And so, these are mindsets that can develop into something dangerous, because at the same time, the rate of suicides. Uh, also increase. Um, like I said, it is unrealistic to believe that we as a society could experience this huge global change and all the things, the, 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 the subsects that come with that. I mean, think about it. So we had this big global pandemic, hadn't had one in a hundred years made us stay in our homes. Inevitably, that alone forced you to see your family. In other words, prior to that in your business, you know, you had your schedules, the kids come home at this time, they got to do homework, we have to cook dinner, we sit down and eat dinner, we watch little TV, we go to bed. Now you're stuck 24 seven. You either get to really know who they are, you know, that could be good or bad for whatever reason. So now uh, another subset is it was during this quarantine that George Floyd was killed and everybody was home and everybody learned about it. And everybody began to care with action because they could. There was nowhere to go. So then there was this huge up uprise of uh, social uh, uh, awareness of the injustice that happens to a particular se segment of our, our community or the 
you know, marginalized groups of people. And where that started, it continues on to this day and spread out into different categories of marginalized people, Asian hate, um, the LGBTQ community. These are, these are all become heightened um, uh, issues all under that umbrella of COVID. Now we're not restricted to being quarantined. We're able to come out some, but you had to wear masks. You had to be considerate of other people. That in and of itself brought up a whole nother dynamic of, of, of great division between those who simply refused to believe. I thought this was all some political um, fake thing that somebody, somebody somewhere decided to just lie and say the whole world <laughs> was under a global pandemic and 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 that it was nothing nothing to fear didn't exist and this was from the top down to your neighbors so then you had the masks the maskers and the uh, uh the, the unmasked fighting about you know how legitimate this thing is meanwhile people are dropping like flies so that that's another subset um, then you have the political thing, vaccine or not vaccine, mandate or not mandate, which always kind of threw me because we've always had mandated vaccines for as long as I've lived it, of some degree. Uh, and I don't remember this uproar about it before. So here you have all of these issues deriving out of that. Food shortages, food price increase. These are all reasons that would legitimately cause spiritual distress because change brings about that. And that, that one thing that, that COVID caused all of that in the, in the, in the trickle down, uh, trickling down of it all. Um, so we're going to take a break and talk about the news and uh, then we're going to, uh, do an offering appeal, amen, somebody, and then we'll come back on the other side of this lesson, this discussion, and talk about ways that we can uh, individually relieve ourselves uh, or restore ourselves back to spiritual good health. Um, all right. Okay. One of the things, reasons that I, I was late is because I had to redesign everything for the Zoom versus my software. So let's see how this works out. <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. If you have not attended our midweek Bible study in this book of Joshua, you are truly missing out. We are having a great time. Uh, we just finished Joshua chapter nine, which I particularly loved um, because, well, you're just going to have to, you just, you just, you're just going to have to get involved. Amen. <laughs> but we do that via Zoom every Wednesday at 730. We're going to do the book of Joshua right out to the, to the annual conference, I'm assuming, um, because we, we lost a lot of weeks. Uh, in my grief and and other things so it was only a it's only meant to be 24 weeks but i believe we're gonna we're gonna be able to carry this on but it's a rich rich lesson joshua was was a true warrior a true man of god and there's a lot of lessons that we can learn that are relevant to our now uh, amen so i i invite you to join us weekly oh my goodness this was yesterday Yesterday we had uh, we hosted we co-hosted uh, New Bethel AME Church and and the Shepherd's Heart co-hosted the annual Women in Ministry SOS service and oh my goodness my sister preached out of her spirit yesterday out of her overflow it it was it was powerful it was a wonderful service we did a great job we hosted well um i don't have any pictures <laughs> I, you know the 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 media person we have I, she was in the kitchen and i was doing the board so it just never occurred to me to have somebody 
you know, taking pictures, but it is on Facebook. It's on my page. It's on our church page. You got to go back and watch it. It was, it was great. We, we had a really great time. Elder, Elder Cook and Sister Cook uh, attended, um, as well as a lot of our uh, uh, female pastors and their spouses. It was, it was a really, really great time. So I just wanted to encourage you to go back and, and watch the service. Um, just want to remind you that the Shepherd's Heart is hosting Presiding Elders Appreciation, which will be virtual. Um, I believe we hosted last year and the year before, if I'm not mistaken. I think we've hosted for as long as it's it was it's been virtual. So um you know, want to save the date and, and pay attention to that. Um, and that's really all the news that I have. So at this time, I'd ask that you uh, pull out your phones, your checkbooks, and give. Uh, we may be out of our building, but we still have operating costs. And so let me see if I can find that video and you can go ahead and start. Amen. You want to give the TSH and then you have instructions on if you want to give If you want to give to um, New Bethel, it's all right there. Oh, I know where it is. Oh. Incredible. There we go. Give, give, give. Hope we don't get stuck. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. Help me out now, here we go. Give, and it will come back to you. Press down, shake it together and riding over and give and it will come back to you when you give, give to the Lord, give in love, give in faith, give with joy and a smile on your face. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank those of you who gave that are continuing still to try to give. God bless you. Uh, let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for all the ways that you blessed us from last week to this week. All the ways that you've enlarged us, increased us, protected us, provided for us, God. Oh God, we, we thank you. We kind of not Robert to take just a little bit of what you blessed us with and sow it into the kingdom of God. We pray that these seeds will grow deep roots and bear ripe fruit. Amen. Um, let me give some shout outs before we go back to our lesson. I'm so happy to see you, Sister Quay. Amen. Oh, well, let me go back. I believe I saw Minister Kelsey and Sister Tish. And Sister Anet, amen. Sister Sharon, praise God for you this morning. Um, wait a minute. Who was that? That was somebody else. Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, I see uh, Brother Braxton. My little baby sister, Sister Deja, amen. Happy to see you all. Praise God for you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Amen. Okay, so we're going to go back into our topic. And I, 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 I'm, I think we sufficiently stated uh, that this is a season where no one could look at you funny. Uh, if you're experiencing spiritual distress. Now, while I'm focused on this particular season that we're in of COVID, let me just say that this is also something that a lot of clergy deal with be even before COVID. It's just, it, it's, a, it's a matter of course, because ministry becomes like work. And so uh, you, you tend to, to detach uh, once you're away from church business church matters, um, uh, there, there becomes like a severing or a disconnect easily uh, that can occur with your relationship with God. And that's another reason why, uh, you know, we need to, to, to be unified and, and, and be in positions to encourage one another and lift one another and, and keep us going. I know that um, one of my colleagues, Reverend James uh, Watson, he every now and then on a regular basis though now he will call me and say i'm just calling to check on you i just want to see where you are what's going on and i know i'm not the only one he does that with um, but it's 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 such a great uh encouragement and so i you know uh, and i believe this is something school teachers would experience when they especially now but then that falls under the covid thing doesn't it um, but even prior to that, it can become mundane and rote, especially if you're dealing with a difficult assignment. Uh, just, just stress and pressure can cause you to become spiritually distressed. And so it's something that we, we all tend to deal with in life in general. Uh, my goal today is just to show how, because of this particular season, it's, it's heightened. Uh, incredibly high, heightened uh, because of that. And so instead of us continuing to just deal with it and just have it, you know, let's work on resolving it, overcoming it, moving past it. Amen. Because we are children of God. We are people of faith. Uh, we read about tumultuous times uh, in the Bible. Why do we think we're exempt? And how does what we're going through compare uh, to what they went through? Leprosy, amen. Um, floods, <laughs> you know, come on. Um, when Egypt was, not Egypt, when Israel was in bondage in Egypt, they, they dealt with uh the plagues, you know, they had actually had to have blood, uh, the blood of the lamb, a, a, a literal lamb placed over their doorpost so that the deaf spirit will pass through. Can you imagine what, what how that can mess with your, your mind and your spirit? So uh, as the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. This is just our turn. 
So we got to we got to draw back on those people uh, that we can that we can read about. Try, try to do a quick look. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> that we can read about. I want to do a, a Trump thing. Here we go. <laughs> that we can pick up our Bible and read about what these people went through and have hope because they got through. Because the same God, the same God that pulled them out can pull us out. Amen. So let's go back to our lesson. Slash discussion. Ah, move out of the way. Oh, look at that. Then the little movies played that time. I don't know what to tell you. <coughs> How do we recover? How do we recover from this global spiritual distress? Individual spiritual distress community, communal, family, spiritual distress. How do we recover? Recovering from spiritual distress means you may feel a higher sense of purpose, peace, hope, meaning. Uh, results from relieving your spirit from distress. What? I don't think I meant to write that. Oh, results from relieving your, your spirit from distress results in better confidence, self-esteem, and self-control. You're able to make sense of your experiences in life. And when experiencing new change, whether physical illness, loss, or disappointment, it can help you feel inner strength and result in a healthy acceptance of the new situation. Here's the thing, and I said this in Sunday school this morning. As children of God, as people of God, what we have to continue to remind ourselves of is whose we are. So much of it is about who we are. But we have to remember whose we are. Like I just said, people have gone through this. Even in modern history, like I said, 100 years ago, people were quarantined with the Spanish flu and they, they persevered, they endured, they overcame. And here we are. Um, so it's, 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 there's nothing that's impossible for God, with God. But we have to maintain our connection to God. Amen? And when you have that, so we're getting ready to go over some things that help nurture that, that connection, that relationship. Um, because that's what it takes. It takes being in a God in a God environment. That's what it takes. And what we had stacked against us, starting with the quarantine, is being away from a God environment. People watching the news more. Uh, you know, you're away from from the people that that did lift you, that did encourage you, that would just stand there and pray for you right there in the lobby of the church or whatever, the parking lot uh, or at Starbucks after church or before church, you lose that, you know, and then that, that spiritual distress comes in. And so, but it doesn't have to stay. It doesn't have to remain. You can't just get saved and say, okay, I'm saved. I have fire insurance. I'm just going to go on through life. This is work. Salvation is work. If anybody told you it wasn't, they lied to your face. This is work and it's constant. We have to remember the two commandments that Jesus said, all the laws of God uh, uh, summarizes. And that's to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. What does that mean to you? When you're spiritually distressed and you become disconnected, you're no longer doing that. So then we need to put ourselves in positions and circumstances and around people that will help encourage and motivate us to do that. And then the, the, the other one was love our neighbors as ourselves. Um, and so these are the two relationships 
that we need to stay focused on to be able to get through things that are seemingly unsurmountable, seemingly impossible. These are the things that we have to, to these are the relationships that we have to nurture, that we have to invest in, you know, that we have to stay vested with. All right. Minister Sharon said the, the faith and hope the size of a mustard seed. It don't take much. Uh, but again, staying in that God environment uh, is key. So let's look at ways that we can we can recover from spiritual distress. Ways to recover. First, recognize the signs. We talked about the signs earlier, you know, um, feeling hopeless, unhappy, melancholy, or just disconnected, feeling like you have no purpose, you, so you make no plan. Uh, so recognize the signs. Your, your, your relationship with God has declined, has diminished. Um, has been reduced to just surface stuff or has just completely stopped. Um, in that conversation I had with that person, you know, they actually said, I, I don't go. I don't watch church. I don't go to church. I don't watch it on social media. I'm, I'm just done. And they had it recently suffered a, a huge, huge loss. So a lot of it was grief. But the sentiments I've heard multiple times from multiple people throughout this whole COVID season um, especially when we flipped from physical church to virtual church, a lot of things became in question as to the validity of worship when not assembled. But I would remind everybody that the writers of the Bible could only write out of their own personal experience. I mean, if they had YouTube, I'm pretty sure that would have been, uh, included, you know, assemble virtually, however we assemble, uh, because we don't want to put limitations on what God does and what God can do and will do. Uh, and so the point is, is to stay connected. But anyway, so you want to recognize the signs. And so now here's the number two is big acceptance of change. Change going to come. Whether or not we in this COVID season, change gonna come. That's just a fact of life. Change gonna come. Some things you can change or improve. And there are other things that will happen that you can do absolutely nothing about. COVID is one of them. The state of our, our, our world right now. Uh, is one of them. Uh, but acceptance that our old normal is no longer our normal is a huge step. It's a process, but it, it, it's, it's, it's what we need to all be working on. We, Because listen, COVID is not going anywhere. We will be dealing with this for the rest of our lives. Maybe not to this degree, but in some different form or fashion. So we have to accept that we cannot do the things that we used to do. Uh, we can't be as casual. Um, and then the, all the subset of things that occurred because of COVID, we have to accept those things. We have to accept, uh, I lost many Republican friends. Still love them, still pray for them, will not have a discussion with them, will not eat dinner with them. Um, let me say, not all of them. Let me be very clear, not all of them. Because I don't, I don't have a problem with conservative conservatives in general. I, I've, I've opt, uh, for a long time considered myself a liberal conservative. Um, but just, just this season caused darkness to be revealed that I, and I don't think they knew that they had. And, uh, and, and I had to accept that 
that that's 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 what was going on so we have to accept whatever the change is <laughs> whether it's a whether it's a um a, a mutable change whether it's, it's it's an illness whether it's a loss whether it's uh the change in your 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 ability to do or have uh whether it's something that 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 can be improved that can be restored or lost forever we have to accept that the change happened we want to always be the kind of people that say okay that happened can i do anything about it can i make it better can i learn from it you, you give we, we we can't have it happen and we buckle that's not what a warrior would do that's not what a child of God would do. So you want to accept to be be accepting uh, of the change. Now, number three, all of these are important. Find a trusted spiritual partner who listens. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs and that it may benefit those who listen. You need a spiritual partner. Uh, and in this aspect, I'm not talking about your pastor. I'm talking about uh, when you're spiritually dry, uh, or, or in distress, you don't reach out to, you know, your friend from around the way who is not a Christian, who is not a person of faith, um, who is not saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled, who does not pray, who does not cherish and appreciate worship. No, you need a spiritual partner who listens, who can you can bear your heart to, and vice versa who you can pray with, who you can encourage and be encouraged by to attend church events or to um, study, do a personal study together with that person or talk about the gospel or talk about something you read. Just somebody, a spiritual partner that you can connect with on a regular basis where you can encourage each other. I personally would advise one but there are small groups as well. Uh, so that's, that's, that's key to, to not feeling like you're going at this alone. And also as somebody that can hold you accountable to your walk. Um, you know, I haven't seen you on in church for a while. I haven't seen you uh, online while we were live streaming what's going on. You know, you haven't called me. We used to talk every morning, Wednesday morning, have prayer. You, you've you been missing the last three weeks. What's going on? How can I help? You know, this is what I'm saying. You need a spiritual partner uh, who will listen and hold you accountable. Four is help yourself by helping others. And I put up here an example is intercessory prayer. When I am going through, with the exception of this, season of grief that I had because I got to tell you I totally shut down but prior to that when I would have a hard time one of the things that I would do was pull out my prayer list people will often say you know lift me in prayer and I write that down uh, for my members specifically I, I pray for you guys consistently uh, and sometimes you let me know what I'm praying for <laughs> and I'll and I'll have that on my in my prayer journal and I will pour all my energy into that taking the focus off whatever I'm dealing with uh, is the most powerful and empowering activity that you can do. Uh, but also you can go feed the homeless, you know, uh, help somebody move, different, different ways to take your focus off of your issue. Because let me tell you something, for as long as I've lived, and I'm talking like I'm 90, but you know what I mean, uh, whatever my issue was, whatever I was going through, there was always somebody who was going through it worse, who had it worse. So again, there's nothing new under the sun. You are not going through anything that hasn't already happened to somebody else. Um, so come outside of your circumstance, your issue, 
and help somebody else. Even if it's just calling somebody to say, you know, I just wanted to call you and tell you what a wonderful person you are. What a huge heart you have. And I'm so happy to have you in my life. These are little things. I'm not talking about moving mountains even. Just this, these little things. And, and you, the, 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 your, your spirit will lighten. Your spirit will brighten. Amen. Show up for you. Number five. Now I've, I've said this in, in uh, several of my self-care or self-love sessions, but it's, it's raised true for this too. Show up for you. The one of the things with spiritual distress is as you connect from plan and purpose, you connect from self-worth. Um, so it's something you have to push yourself for. Um, if it's getting a new hairdo, getting your nails done, uh, if that's what it's going to take to make you feel better about going out and becoming involved and active in something and not isolating yourself from your community, specifically your church community, uh, then, then that's what you want to do. Show up for you. What do you have to do to show up for you? And then you want to seek spiritual support. This is where your pastor comes in. This is where your spiritual advisor comes in. Um, because as we're having this discussion in this lesson, in this season, or in this time right now, um, here are answers. And it's, and it's those pastors and, and those spiritual advisors that can give you answers or at least places to go to look for answers and resources um, about your spiritual connection. We got a couple more. Oh, I went out of order, y'all. Oh, no, that was it. See, there's a problem. Okay. I... So I said spiritual mentor. Okay. I'm all confused. I don't mess up these screens somehow. So then I did the same thing. Okay. A spiritual mentor uh, you also want to have. I've, I have many spiritual mentors. Uh, mentors in ministry. You know, you have mentors in, in, in different categories, the work mentors or whatever, educational mentors. Find a spiritual mentor, somebody who you aspire to be where they are. Um, don't pay attention to this scripture. I don't know why I, I did that. Uh, but under the spiritual or under the spiritual partner, this is the scripture that I wanted, where in Matthew 18, 19, 19 through 20, it says, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So a spiritual partner, a spiritual mentor, those are very important uh, to recovery. Okay. Well, we went a little long this morning. I pray that this was, uh, Sister Sherry told me it's okay, take your time. <laughs> I'm reading your comments in Facebook now. If you, if you have a question or, or whatever, go ahead and type it in the comment and we'll go ahead and, and cover it. But I want I wanted this piece to be encouraging. Uh, and I would ask you to remember Jeremiah 29 and 11, uh, where it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, often we stop right there, but I want us to continue on through to verse 14, where it says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. God is talking and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you 
says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Wow. Wow. That's our God. So this is a this is a, 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 a basically instructions in our spiritual distress. He says, call upon me, pray to me. And, and God says he will he will have an open ear. Then he says to seek him. To, and when we do, when we search for him, when we purposely and intentionally search for him with all our hearts, we will be found by God. Amen. And so that brings us back to being in a God, in a God environment. Because there will be in your spiritual distress, you're not going to feel like going to church. I'm going to just be real. You're not going to feel like doing Bible study. You're not going to feel like listening to, you know, taking the, going on the prayer call or whatever. You're not going to feel like it. So partnership, staying in a church environment are always to motivate you. I'm going to tell this, this testimony and then, then we'll conclude. Um, when Trevor was, uh, was it? Yeah, when Trevor was about one or two years old, um, I got I got pregnant naturally, which had never happened before. It always took some kind of help, scientific help, and and I I was I can say now as I sit here today, I was just elated, elated. I could feel the fluttering and everything. Um, and then, you know, people would tell you if you adopt, then you'll just get pregnant naturally, you'll relax. And I'm thinking, wow, that might have been true. It's not true, by the way. Um, but it turns out that pregnancy was ectopic. It was ectopic. It was not viable. And I was brokenhearted. I was arrogant with God. And I left God. Taylor was about, uh, no, if Taylor was five, then he, yeah, yeah, Taylor was about five. And I stopped going to church. I stopped reading my Bible. I stopped praying. I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk to the church people no more. I didn't take their calls. I was hot with God. And then one day, Taylor said to me, mommy, why are we going to church? I want to go to church. Well, just because I was mad at God didn't mean I stopped believing in God or his power. Um, I was not going to keep her from worship or being in a God environment. And she was five. It's not like, you know, she could take the city bus or I was going to send her a taxi. I had to take her myself. So we went to church. We sat in the back of the church. And my posture was like this most of the time. You know, just waiting for it to be over. And what I can tell you is, I'm tearing up just thinking about it. I felt an overwhelming presence of God. It, 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 I, it's like he literally enveloped me, like he literally just covered me sitting there in that church. Now, two minutes before that happened, I remember actively, I ain't singing, I ain't praying, I'm not reading scripture with y'all, I'm not even open, I didn't bring my Bible. I'm certainly not running up and down the aisles and shouting and all of that. I'm going to sit right here to that lady do the benediction and we out, <laughs> you know. And I just felt this huge presence. I mean, kind of like, like, like I imagine Adam felt in the garden, you know, when, when, the, when the scripture says that he, he, he knew his fullness. I just felt God's fullness. And the tears. 
just flowed. And what was revealed to me in that time was that God had never left me. And I did not earn a blessing. See, I was mad because I thought I earned that pregnancy. I had showed up to church every Sunday. I was active in the youth department. I was a good mother. I was a good wife. I earned that pregnancy. And it was taken away. And I was ticked off. And I was brokenhearted. And I was hurt. And I was quitting. But in that time when God's presence was on me so thick, I realized that I didn't quit him. I quit me. I quit me. Because all of those were, I, all of those were facets of life. I quit living. When I detached myself from God, I stopped living. And it only hurt me. And I also learned that was my first real understanding in a whole new perspective of Romans 8, 28, all things, even hurtful things, ugly things, heavy things work together for good to those who love God, to those who love God. Love is not a feeling. Love is action. To those who love God. So my perspective changed. And out of that, I'm now the parent of six beautiful, huge hearted children who I am so proud of. And the, and the Mima to three. Amen. That was his plan. So when you have a hard time, it's not the time to back away. You may because you're flesh, because you're human. But that's why it's so important to stay in the church environment. What I believe God tugged on Taylor's heart in that season because she ain't never been a fan of church. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it, I can't explain it any other way that I feel like he came for me. God came and got me and brought me back home and, and, and comforted me in that, in that feeling, his presence. That's what I felt like. I felt comfort in that time. Now, the, the, the pain of, of losing a child still continued, but in that particular moment, it was gone. I felt whole. I felt loved. I felt comforted. It was one of my many genuine Christ experiences. And so I'm just saying, I'm just, just trying to share that, that testimony with you to say that you're not alone, even when you are alone. God is aware. God is watching. Even if you don't see his movements, he's in the background. He's preparing that season for when you come out. But there's so much of this journey that you've got to initiate on your own. And that's why you want to surround yourself with people who are going to be encouraging and for you. Amen. Uh, all right. I've gone on way too long. Sharon say God left the 99 just to win after that one. Oh, that was a great, that was a great, yeah, that, that's, that's good. <laughs> he left the 99 and came after me. <laughs> Amen. All right. I want you to continue your day. Uh, my new grandbaby's coming over to, to visit with us today because me and Shannon's the only one that's seen her in the flesh. So we're excited to have them there. So I'm going to get out here and go cook something and clean something and and uh, 
but I continue to think about you all and pray for you all. And I ask that you do the same for me while we go through this season, um, continuing through this season and the, and the outlash, the residue of COVID. Uh, amen. But it's nothing is, is too hard for God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to thank you for this time. We want to thank you for the revelations. We want to thank you for the tools that you've equipped us with. We want to thank you for the suggestions and the advice so that we can recover from spiritual distress in this season, this chaotic season, God. This season that can be hurtful, that can be full of lacking, that can be uh, killers of motivation and dreams and goals and objectives, God. But you are still a God that sits high and looks low. You are still God on the throne. And we declare and decree, you are our God and we are your people. We ask you to continue to cover us, provide, protect us uh, as we continue on into the valley, God, after we leave this mountaintop. And so that when we return, Seeking your face, God, in the presence of your people. What a time, what a time, what a time. It's in Jesus' name that we continuously pray. And all God's children said, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, uh, everybody, because everybody's online today. Um, I appreciate it your attention and prayerfully hope that uh, I was as much a blessing to you as you were to me and that God is the God of blessings to us all. All right. I love you all because I love you each. Step out.